for having me today. I'm going to present the advantage of producing chain memory alloy uh, based on copper using laser powder bed fusion. Uh, as you know very well, uh, there are different kinds of smart materials. Between them, there are piezoelectric, photoelectric, magnetic restricted materials. And today I'm going to talk about the chain memory alloy. Um, this uh, material has the particularity that can be respond to a stimulus, uh, such as temperature, maybe deformation or stress, um, electric or magnetic field as well. And when it are fabricated by uh, additive manufacturing, um, like a SLM or wire, let me check it. Yeah, SLM or wire arc additive manufacturing, you can uh, add uh, other dimension, which is the time. So for this uh, reason, they are called for the material. So uh, you know very well also that there are many kinds of techniques for manufacturing this kind of material. They are some for polymers. And here in boxes are uh, those techniques that uh, you can produce metal materials. And today I'm going to present my work uh, uh, already done by selective laser melting, which is based on powder bed fusion. Uh, what is the fundament of the chain memory alloy? All is uh, in their microstructure or the microstructure that you can achieve during the manufacturing process or by a heat treat. Uh, as you see here, for there are different kinds of uh, chain memory property. One of them is the super elasticity, the other the chain memory effect and the damping capacity. As you see here, uh, we have a Martin site, uh, which is which is um, non-equilibrium phases. Um, when this need to be have twinning, and when you stress the material, you can deform your material, but the twinning, the martian side, and when you take off this stress, and after heating, you can recover all the uh, shape or original shape. And it is happen at lower temperature, lower than the martian side finish. But if you uh, carry out this uh, test, but at high temperature, uh, higher than the austenite uh, finish, uh, you start with the austenite and you uh, deformate, and with the help of the stress and also the temperature, you, you can transform the austenite to in the twining martensite. side. And then when you take off the uh, stress, you can recover the original shape again um, without uh, remaining uh, plastic deformation. And as you see here, there are uh, inclusive area that is called damping capacity, which is the all the energy that can accumulate the materials um, in deformation, but can dissipate in heat. So there are many alloys that can be have uh, this kind of property, the more famous as the naked titanium. And today there are several studies in other kind of um, system or alloys. Uh, one of them is the copper aluminum nickel uh, system, uh, which has demonstrated to have a good recoverable strain and also a great super elasticity um, at different specific weight. The more famous, as I told you, is the nickel titanium based alloy, which has been used in, for example, biomedical application in a stent, and others, for example, for actors in colloid uh, chain memory alloy, in order to improve some movement or automatize some movement in robotic hair, for example. But um, as the nickel titanium are expensive, so you can use it just in the smaller devices. For other kind of application, like a building reinforcement or maybe for seismic response, uh, for example, Chile, I am Chile now, and we are a seismic country, so you need to have some uh, reinforcement for big structures like a buildings or bridges or something like this. So copper based alloy, uh, because they are cheaper, they can be used in great uh, quantity of mass. So it's an alternative or candidate to, um, to be a building reinforcement or other, but in big quantity. The project aims that I have in my postdoctoral research is first 
uh, was first to determine the laser parameter, the optimum laser parameter, to obtain the better mechanical property of this alloy. And after that, I tried to choose the better parameters in order to know if they can, uh, can have uh, the chain memory properties. So this is what I want to show you today. Uh, there are here a collage of some images that I take uh, during all the process, as you see, and that helped me to uh, obtain my results. So uh, first I use a general electric machine. This is a selective laser magnet, and I performed that by a design of experiment where I varied the power and also the velocity of the laser. And I keep in constant the layer thickness and also the hat space of the laser. With the formula, I can estimate which was the um, volumetric energy that I construct all my samples. In total, was nine. Uh, this alloy was uh, performed in triplicated and I fabricate in horizontal and vertical with eight millimeter of diameter and six millimeter of heavy. Well, I have divided the, this slide in order to distribute the characterization that I done. Uh, first of all, I construct the as-built samples in order to know which was the better laser parameter to obtain this alloy. Um, and then I choose the better and I work and I compare the as built samples, as built plus quenchy and the commercial sample. I compare everything in order to know if we have any advantage of produce this alloy by this technique. So I characterize the material by XRD and also for metallographic in order to know the faces. This is the fundament of um, the chain memory alloy. I determine the phase transition temperature by DCC and all other kind of intensive, intensive property was measured, like density and roughness. And for the first part, I performed uh, my sample in compressive strength uh, to the rupture and determine the elongation and the maximum strength. On the other hand, to determine the better uh, chain memory property, I carry out the, the test at room temperature and also at 350 degrees Celsius. Uh, it was done until uh, at 800 megapascal. Uh, about the result, uh, I get, uh, as you see here, I have the density and the roughness of the top of the surface, both vertically and horizontally samples. Uh, this is versus uh, the volumetric energy that they construct each sample. As you see here, uh, we reached uh, around 97% of density. That is great for us. And, and the roughness was around 20, 20 and 25 micrometers. That is the singular uh, particle size distribution was in the range. And also, we researched all uh, the phases that we can get. Here they are the micro optical microscope and the cross section uh, taken by um, uh, FISM. And here we have the extra department of the different samples that were producing, uh, produced uh, by different volumetric energy. As you see, more of them are composed by a great amount of beta phase of the prime phase, which is the Martin side. This is the, the, the microstructure that is not stable. And alpha phase, which is uh, rich in copper, that is copper mainly, and kappa phases, which are instrumentally compounds. As you see here in the picture, the acicular are the, the shape of the beta prime, and the other grains here are composed, are composed for just copper. Then I performed the compressive strength, uh, and you see here for samples constructed with uh, lower and higher volumetric energy in vertical and horizontally. Um, here, as you see, uh, vertical samples show the better elongation and also better uh, maximum strength compared with the horizontally. And as you see here, I have divided also the curve in three steps. At the first step, is all is the, the twining of the Martin sign, and then we have the elastic modulus or the elastic deformation. And around 800 megapascal, we have the plastic deformation. As you see by the the, the samples, uh, 
uh, pictures, they are a, um, a fracture of 45 degrees uh, of a slope. Uh, it's mean that it, the material is very brittle. Then I construct uh, this uh, graph in order to compare or to know which was the better power and also velocity of laser to construct these samples. As you know, as you see here, we have uh, the maximum strength and the maximum elongation for vertical samples. And the better combination for maximum strength was at low power, but sorry, at any power, but at high velocity of laser. But when you check the elongation, you see that the, at lower potentials, sorry, lo lower uh, powers and at any velocity, you can achieve a good elongation. So if we combine both, uh, we will say that at lower potential, but at high velocity around this point, we can achieve uh, a good maximum strength and also elongation. Then I perform the, um, uh, the DCC for to know which is the phase transformation temperature. As you see over here in the range of 200 and 400, uh, 400 degrees Celsius for power powders and also for the sample that I constructed with different uh, volumetric energy, the peak is very uh, flat or uh, smooth. It is because uh, the intermetallic component that is formed in the alloy um, obstructs the complete phase transformation. But the transformation is around uh, 300 degrees Celsius. Also, I, I did this graph in order to understand which, uh, if there are any correlation between the property that I measure. Um, with, for example, with the volumetric energy. As you see by the Pearson number correlation, uh, there are not correlation between the energy that I fabricate the sample and the roughness achieved uh, during the process. But yes, there are some uh, record relationship between the energy and the maximum extreme that, uh, that I can achieve in the samples. After that, I choose the better, uh, the better um, parameters of laser and I compare the mechanical property with the commercial sample and also after the as built sample, quenching from 700 and 900 degrees Celsius. As you see, it looks very different when I treat or I heat treat the samples. As you see here, when I heat treated the sample at 900 degrees Celsius, uh, alpha with my, with, uh, with my starting shape appear, which is in the lighter zones, and the dark, darker zone, uh, zones are the beta phases, which is the Merton side. And when I uh, I did the, the uh, heat treatment, but at uh, 700 degrees Celsius, it um, this microstructure are thinner than in at 900. So they have the similar phases, but the distribution are different. And then I performed the material in order to know which they are the chain memory property. It was done up. Uh, 23 degrees Celsius at 350 degrees Celsius for commercial, the as sample and after heat treatment. As you see here at room temperature, um, there are not many different between the super elasticity of the material. So it is a check. We have a good, uh, great uh, mechanical property or super elasticity in material as in as built condition. But when I did the, um, the test, thermomechanical test, I checked that after on Lua, uh, a big area uh, was created between curve and closest between curve. And it is uh, the area that the energy then that the material can uh, accumulate. Um, and it is an uh, example of the damping property. But the as field doesn't happen or doesn't have a great area between curve. It is because in the other samples, they have a larger um, amount of alpha phase. So when you apply it 600 more or less megapascal of a stress, you activate uh, with the temperature and the stress, the slip plane to the plastic deformation of the alpha phase. 
So you have here the mechanism for room temperature and also for uh, high temperature. As you see here, we have a, um, a sleep plane activation. So we have a plastic deformation. And that is the reason that uh, why these samples have a good damping properties. And these as you uh, sample, have a good super elasticity, even at high temperature. And as a conclusion, I can say that we got a good uh, density of the samples, um, even at very long uh, range of uh, volumetric energy. Also, uh, with the additive manufacturing, we favorite the formation of the martensite, which is uh, the, the microstructure that uh, help us to achieve a good super elasticity. So that is great from the point of view of LED manufacturing. Um, the better result for damping property was uh, it was in the commercial and when I heat treated the sample. So a post processing of additive manufacturing sample, you can achieve a similar behavior regarding damping property, like uh, when I question from 90 degrees Celsius. 900 uh, degrees Celsius. And finally, I would like to say thanks to my sponsors and my colleagues, Jorge Ramos, Magdalena Barzac, and my friends and colleagues, uh, Ivan Lafe. Thank you so much. Gracias a todos uh, in Spanish. Um, I will open for all your questions. Thank you. <laughs>